Welcome to the lair of the Batty Boffin. Hi there Batty fans, it's time for a little more chemistry with the Batty Boffin and today we're looking at the periodic table. Now this is part of a series where we're looking at all the different groups in the periodic table. If you're not sure what a group is, have a look at one of the earlier videos where we talk about the structure of the periodic table but here's just a quick reminder of where group 7 comes. So that's group seven over on the right hand side there. The group sevens are often known as the halogens and I'm sure you're familiar with some of the members of that group. The four most common ones are fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine. There is another one at the bottom called astatine but that's kind of radioactive and it doesn't have any stable isotopes so we don't tend to use that one very much. Um, to be honest we don't tend to use fluorine that much either mainly because it's so reactive. I'll tell you a little more about that later. Before we go any further can I just draw your attention to the rather strange spelling of fluorine. A lot of people spell it like it's flour at the beginning. F-L-O-U-R. It isn't. It's U-O-R which is kind of a little bit weird but hey that's English for you. It's the same same fluor as in um, uh, fluorescent, that one there, and uh, fluoride in your toothpaste, which is the same stuff there. So what we're going to start off here is telling you a little bit about the electron structure of all the halogens. They're all very similar, as you've probably gathered in the periodic table, whatever happens to one happens to all the ones down the group. So once you know one, you know all of them. And the electron structure tells us loads and loads about why they act the way they do. So I've drawn up here, I started off with fluorine. So in the middle I've got an F, the chemical symbol, and that's just showing the nucleus, that little inner circle. And then around it we've got two electron shells. If you don't know about electron shells, then go and check out one of the other Batty Boffman videos on the structure of the atom, because it's really important on here. But just as a quick recap, we think of the electrons of hang as hanging around in these shells or orbitals. The inner one holds two electrons and I've shown them there, one, two. The next one can hold up to eight electrons. Now, quick pop back to the periodic table, here's fluorine. And you can see that that is element number nine. If it's element number nine, that means it has nine protons and it has nine electrons. So we've got two on the inner shell and then we need another seven on the next shell out to make it up to nine. So here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine electrons for fluorine. Now, chlorine is in the next layer down in the periodic, the next period we call it. So the top layer is for the inner ring. The second layer down, which is where fluorine is, has two rings. Chlorine's on the third layer down, so that has three rings. Here they are, one, two, three. There's chlorine in the middle. That inner circle indicates the nucleus and one, two, three rings. So here is the first thing for you to do. I'd like you to get some pen and paper, please. Copy down this one, okay? Two electrons on the inner ring and then the next ring out makes it up to the total of nine. I'll just put that on here. So that's nine electrons. Okay, you need nine in there, two and seven. Chlorine has three rings. Okay, oh I'll just put it, it's two on the inner and then seven on the next one out. Now chlorine has three rings or three orbitals of electrons. I'd like you to draw in please the electron structure. Chlorine is element number 17 which means it has 17 protons and therefore in its atom 17 electrons. The inner ring can hold two, there they are, one, two. The next layer out can hold up to eight, the layer outside that can hold up to 18. You fill the inner rings first before going on to the outside, so see if you can please draw in the electron structure for chlorine. Pause the video and have a go at that now please. You should have something that looks like this. Now, I've drawn my electrons in pairs. It doesn't matter if you haven't done that. That's kind of uh, further on. They do tend to hang around in pairs here. But you should have two on the inner ring, eight on the next ring out, and then seven on the outer ring beyond that. So, for 17 electrons, 17 times E, we have a two, eight, seven arrangement. Now, if you fancy having a go at bromine, you can do that. Bromine has got another ring 
and it can have two on the inner ring and then eight on the next ring, a maximum of 18 on the next and a maximum of 18 on the one beyond that. Now I'm not going to draw that on here, okay, because I haven't really got time, but you can check that out, look on the periodic table, see what number it is, that tells you how many protons, it's got that many number of electrons and when you draw it out you will find that, get the right pen on here, for bromine it's two, eight, 18, can you guess what the last number is? It's 7 again. All of the, and iodine's the same, it ends up with a 7. All of the halogens end up with a 7. And that's why they're in group 7. That's, you know, it's called group 7 because they've got 7 electrons. Group 1 have 1 electron on the outer shell. Group 2 have 2 electrons on the outer shell. All the way over group 6, 6 electrons on the outer shell. And group 7, 7 electrons on the outer shell. And this tells us a lot about how they work. So I'm just going to wipe down this board a little bit, pause the video, get yourself a nice mug of coffee or something, back in a couple of seconds with a wipe down board. Hi, now here I've got chlorine redrawn. We had that earlier. There's the nucleus in the middle and we have three orbitals of electrons. It's on the third period down, which means it has three orbitals, two electrons on the inner layer, eight on the next layer and seven on this outer layer. Now, as I've said before, all the atoms are desperately keen to have the outer set of electrons full. That would make them very happy, if electrons can be happy. I don't know, do they have moods? Who knows? The outer layer has got seven and it wants eight to be full. So all of the halogens, which all have seven in the outer layer, all of them are desperately keen to get one extra electron from somewhere to fill up the outer layer. One of the popular places they get them are from other atoms, and I'm sure you've heard of the very famous sodium chloride. Well, this is the chlorine bit of it. What's the difference between chlorine and chloride? We're just about to find out. Sodium, as it happens, has got a spare electron, which it's quite keen to get rid of. So if you've got this spare electron, hanging around. Electrons, of course, all have a negative charge. The spare electron, which it's nabbed from sodium, would very nice and neatly fit in to that spare gap with chlorine. Now it's got a full outer orbital and it's happy and stable, which is why sodium chloride, although it's made from sodium, which is poisonous and highly reactive, chlorine, which is poisonous and highly reactive, sodium chloride together is not poisonous and not highly reactive, but rather tasty on chips. So you've got two poisonous reactive things making a really stable compound because of this full outer layer. More about that on some of the other Batty Boffin videos about ionic bonding. But for here, let's just have a look at what's happened. Chlorine is atom number uh, 17, number 17, which means it has 17 protons on the nucleus. So that's got 17 plus, because protons have a positive charge. Around the outside, to balance that, of course, are all the electrons. 15, 16, 17. That's fine. 17 pluses, 17 minuses. But now we've got that extra one. 18. We've got 18 minuses and only 17 pluses. So this is not a neutral atom anymore. It is now an ion. That's nothing to do with the metal ion. That's I-R-O-N. This is an ion, which means an atom with a positive or negative charge. And because it has one spare extra electron, it's no longer Cl but Cl minus, which isn't called chlorine anymore, it's now called chloride, hence sodium chloride. It means it's got a Cl minus in it. All of the halogens work in exactly the same way. They all want to get one extra electron in the outer orbital, which means they've got a spare negative, so they all form single negative ions. F minus, Cl minus, Br minus and I minus. They all form these one negative ions in the same kind of way. Now in other videos we're going to talk about how these ions bond to other things with ionic bonding. Also a little bit about covalent bonding, some of the reactions that occur when they're making sodium chloride for example or sodium iodide, sodium bromide, all the various different things. So pop back to some other videos. We'll talk a little bit more about the halogen set and I'll see you again Batty fans. Bye for now. Mwah! Mwah! Mwah!